thanks for having me here. I'm very excited to be here and to talk about uh, Kotlin in a Scala conference. You know, it's not the ideal environment to talk, and it's uh, in English. So uh, thanks again. And um, luckily, uh, John in his keynote did a lot of my, a lot of the work and a lot of my slides uh, for me. So when I started, I just got accepted and I went to the uh, Kotlin uh, Slack channel and asked them, okay, I'm going to go to a Scala conference, a big conference, what I'm going to do. They gave me some pretty good advices. First was like, say how much uh, Scala is awesome and don't be like cursing all the time. And also just to make sure that I have a clear path to the exit, so <laughs> just for case, it's right here, so please don't block it. <laughs> okay? And uh, I just have to say that I have a lot of background with uh, conflicts. First, I live in Israel. I was born like 500 meters from here in Be'er Sheva. Sorry. <laughs> and also, I work at Outbrain. So um, I, have, uh, I know some conflicts, and I work with them. And when we see such a conflict, we have a few steps that we can take. First, we want to understand what is it exactly. And then we want to see what we can do to be better than it and to to win. So that's what I'm going to talk here about. So the, ne the first part is, what is exactly Kotlin? And what is it about? So Kotlin is statically typed language. It is multi-platform, works uh, first on the JVM, but also JavaScript and native, compiled with LLVM. It uh, was developed by JetBrains, started in 2010. And then in uh, 2016, it became a general availability and it started to gain popularity. And in 2017, it was announced in Google I.O. as a first, first citizen language for the Android development, Android environment, and it became much, much more popular. Its features are conciseness. It is also safe for developers. It is interoperable with Java tool-friendly, and it is fun to use. So I think for Scala also, most of the thing applies, maybe tool-friendly not, but all the others are also. And let's see what exactly how it looks like in terms of syntax. So first, the variable declaration. So it's pretty much exactly like Scala. You can see it side by side. We also have type inference, both in Kotlin and in Scala. In the case of case class, so in uh, Kotlin it calls a data class, data class, but it's pretty much very similar, uh, pretty much the same. For null safety, so here Scala and Kotlin took a, a different approach. Scala approach used the option, which is more functional and easier to work with in a functional environment. Kotlin approach took the nullable types, which built into the language, and you can see here that each type has also a question mark type and has its own operator to work with, and compilation errors and stuff like this. It's nice, but Scala's approach is more functional, I would say. Next thing is the singleton. You see it's pretty much exactly the same. And the next, next one is enum, so I heard it is coming soon. <laughs> I hope. I hope for you, I write in Kotlin. <laughs> but it's pretty nice, I use it a lot. Next thing is the implicit class. So Kotlin has a better marketing, they call it like extension methods, and Scala uses implicit all over the place for other stuff, so it's confusing for beginners. But the, implement, the usage is pretty much the same, like you can see here. Implementation is pretty much similar. I think a little bit more nicer in Kotlin, but not, that's not like a killer feature or something, but it's very nice to use. Next one is operator overloading. So as you can see here, with Scala, you can do everything you want. And I see some crazy stuff like this over our code in Outbrain. In Kotlin, it is very limited. It is easier to search for in Google for example, because the method names are like minus and plus, and it's limited only to arithmetic operators. Next one is the pattern matching. So this, this one is actually something I missed from Scala. It's a really cool feature, 
And in Kotlin, we have the when expression, which is, I don't have time to show it here, but it's like a switch, enhanced switch statement for Java. So this is very cool. And implicit conversions will not, get, will not enter the language. So that was the part of like a brief syntax overview. And now we'll take another comparison, which is like more soft comparison. So first is what Scala is good at. What is it, where it is shines. I think uh, I found a little list two major points that I could, I could tell. First one is that Scala is like very evangelist going to the cutting edge, like, like mentioned before, which is a lot of things from the academia and research that are in, in, taken into the language. And this is a very good point if you want to be on the bleeding edge of technology. Next thing is Scala is very popular. And this is not something that you, are, you can underestimate. For example, I, I'm comparing it to Kotlin, of course, not to Java, for example. But Scala is way more popular than Kotlin. And you can see in Kotlin, we can have, we can have such an amazing conference with, with so many people. It's like maybe a dream that I can have. but. In Israel, to bring to Be'er Sheva all these people, it's a very, very big, uh, very big, very nice thing to see for the Scala community. Okay, so that's what for Scala. For Kotlin, I would say a few points. First is that Kotlin take, took a more pragmatic approach, but also less functional. Scala tries to be functional and object-oriented. Kotlin is more Java++, trying to bring new features faster to Java. It has a better Java interop. It has getter and setters, which are incorporated very good with Java code. You can take a Java library and work it with properties. Even if it's a Java code, it uses the Java list, so it works much better. It is a very lean, the standard library, and I think that's one reason that it was, it was selected for uh, Android. Um, it, it has great tooling also, and it's also a pragmatic language. So uh, it's, it's trying to take the good from all language that was already proven, stuff that was proven. Okay, so uh, now for the, some advices that I have for Scala. I'm sorry for the, for the picture, it was, uh, it's not relevant this week, let's say. <laughs> but maybe next time. So um, if there is something, someone here from Lightband, so it's not that relevant for you. This is some comments for the Scala designers. First is binary compatibility. I think this is a huge pain point from what I see. Yulia just spoke about it trying to find some uh, hacks and workarounds for it, but it hurts. Compilation can be faster. I know people are working on it, but yeah, it's also something, that, a pain point. And the Java interoperability, I wish it was like better, like in Kotlin. And for the Scala users, so I think that if you learn Kotlin, and even if you are not using it, if you are happy with Scala, stay with Scala. But if you see features that are not there, try to think why they are not in Kotlin, and maybe we should not use them. Maybe it will be harder for team members to read. So maybe just try to make like a simpler code if it's possible. And of course, I invite you all to move to Kotlin. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>